Lauren, thank you very much for uh, taking your time to be with me today and discuss your uh, debut album, uh, which I consider a sensational album, which is Glove Maker. I happen to have a copy. There right. it is. I have to have a copy <laughs> right here. Uh, there it is. The, the first thing that I want to ask you is that uh, there must be some different stages of expectation uh, from when you drop the first single, Hollywood Boulevard, uh, to dropping the second one, uh, Glove Maker, then the third one, then the album gets to be released. And now it's we, we're like into the first month uh, after the release of the album. Has your expectation changed? Has your opinion on the album changed? Has anything changed? Mm. Well, first, thank you, uh, Enrico, for, for having me. And um, it, 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 I love that question. You know, I, I'm, I was just reading um, some interviews with, uh, you know, Stal Steve Albini. Um, yeah. And it's really, I think it's just, it's important. It's not easy, but it's important to remember that it is it is a privilege to have people that do not know me be interested in the music at all you know to assume that i can just you know all the dreams of course you know i have very big ambitions and dreams and blah 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 but it's just it is a privilege it's a privilege that people even listen and care and i'm just trying i need to i'm constantly reminding myself of that because it's very easy to get frustrated at certain expectations not being met but um i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing you know i'm just going to keep playing shows making the best work that i can and and hopefully more people get involved you know that is it's not easy to do it's not easy to um but i'm trying you know i'm <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, there, there are different ways of, of uh, there are different stages of mm -hmm. the music sharing, which is sharing yourself uh, with such intimate songs and intimate lyrics. So uh, how do you feel uh, three weeks uh, after the release uh, on how people understand you uh, or mm. feel about your lyrics? Because... Uh, for, you open up when you write down the lyrics and put them and put them into press. You know, you press the the, the vinyl, the the record. But then it's you and yourself. You, yet you have to face the reactions. Uh, yeah. How do you feel people are reacting? Are you happy with the re with the reaction? Do you feel understood or misunderstood or anything at all? Yeah. I mean, all you know, the reactions have been. so beautiful and, and and generous and you know people um i mean first you know people in my life who i haven't seen in years 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 you know reaching out and saying you know um just you know thanking me and i feel you know i mean it's i feel embarrassed to have anybody thanking me for for, for this music um but it's oh i mean i feel um it's hard to process that feeling of, of, of you know, revealing, being uh, uh, naked in a way and people um, having access to this information about myself. But but it's what I always wanted. You know, I want to share um, what some people might consider to be private. I want that to be, that's what I am interested in, 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 in putting out, you know. So the feedback has been, moving it's been moving well you got some great feedback from my channel for sure i mean it, we we're absolutely in love with the album and uh, there's there are a lot of people now watching in this very minute and uh, waving hi you want to be able yeah. you, you won't be able to read them but you, oh. they, they're here and they uh, they they love the album and 
the one thing that I love about this thing is that sorry, excuse me, if, pardon me if I call it thing, but it's a musical. It's a it's, musical. It's a music. It's a thing. It's a thing. It is a thing, but it, it's a musical beauty. Uh, it's the Thank level you. of. Uh, it, it's a very emotional record, and uh, every time I listen to an album that was so emotional. Uh, there was always some deep place within the artist where the emotions came from. Uh, where do yours come from? Mm. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. And it really, you know, I, I need to come to Italy immediately. You have I need to. to come. <laughs> you have to. I really can't wait. Hopefully in the fall. You um, have to. You know, I mean, long story short, you know, I mean, I've been making music my whole life i mean i've been singing my whole life um writing songs in a serious way you know since i was a teenager but as far as trying to make a career out of this it's been close to 10 years and i'm interested in a lot of different um aspects of, of, of songwriting some of it just melody just hooks um vocal quality whatever there's a lot that i'm interested in but um with this album, um, I, I, I felt like, um, how many more times am I going to give this a go? You know, um, I need to um, be really, really, um, I have to be very honest with myself with this music. And, 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 and be, after having the experience of performing, this is a key point, performing live in front of an audience i want to feel um like i am sharing and possessing the the aspects of my personality that that i'm that make me confident that i'm proud of so to be on stage in front of an audience and feel ill equipped is a very uh, embarrassing frustrating feeling so in a way i felt like i need the music to honor what I think are a lot of the facets of my personality so that I feel as confident as possible. And I do now, you know, I mean, when I'm, I love performing these songs live because I feel um, like myself. I feel like my whole self, I mean, there's still much more to the story, you know, but, but it, it was, I, I think that's an important um um, sort of backstory to how these songs were created. Will I feel confident performing these live? Will I feel like myself, you know? Um, and also, I'm not getting any younger. If I don't say, you know, if I if I don't feel confident now, when the fuck am I going to, you know? <laughs> Was that the reason why you uh, got rid of your first attempt to make an album you actually you actually did you made one but yeah. you uh you had some unfortunate uh times with the uh, uh who was representing you musically at the time and deci decided to get rid of it which is a very unusual uh practice for a musician normally they will you know just have another go at the record and uh try to i don't know re-record it or just put it out with a different label you didn't include one single track on Glove Maker from that album. Is it about confidence, the the a lack uh, thereof? Uh, maybe I think it was really about. I mean, I recorded that first album, and about two years passed before getting approval to even release it. So by the time I was in a position to share that music, it just it had felt. Um, it, it, stale, stale in some ways. And also I didn't, you know, I mean, it's a bit dramatic, but I felt like, you know, I when I released my first album, I really want to feel um, like it is an accurate representation of my, my, my artistic needs and my uh, a representation of who I am in that moment. And so to release something that had already felt a bit stale just felt like, I don't want to deprive myself of this experience of being confident about my first album. 
So I decided to just release a few singles and then on to better things, on to better things, you know? Um, I mean, there I had the, the experience of recording that first album without spending too much time here on it um, was really beautiful. And I learned so much and there were incredible musicians that I worked with. Um, that was a, that was really sacred and, 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 and I'm so grateful for that. It was all the stuff around it with, you know, management and bad deal, you know, that kind of stuff tainted the experience. But, um, but yeah, but as far as glove maker, oh yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm writing songs all the time. So it was just time for let's move on. We have to move on. Did it help you to figure out how to uh, approach the recording and, uh, you know, the what to do and what not to do? Uh, on glove maker so was it like a, a learning curve for you yeah I, i think in some ways um i certainly had never um had such a, a an intimate um uh ongoing relationship with the producer like i did for the first album which was with uh, chris taylor from yeah. um, from grizzly bear i love chris um i learned you know it's what did I learn? I mean, it's just what, you know, the, the, um, I mean, recording vocals was a big thing. Um, um, how did you feel about it? Were you stressed, uh, by it or were you just confident and having fun for glove maker? No, for, uh, for, for, the, first... The, for the first one with Chris. Oh, um, oh, all of it. Confident, afraid, confused. Did you have uh, a special setting for for the vocals, like nighttime or a, a candle lit? I don't know. Oh, what we what I loved about the vocals with him, we were you know he was in the room with me, so I was not in a booth. Okay, you know we You're, were. That was great. You I, were I, in the control know, having, room. Exactly. All right. Exactly with him. Um, so you know I I like having um yeah I I like. Um, feeling like there's an audience, you know, even if it's just one person. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, and then going into glove make, I mean, yeah, going into this. Um, I mean, I think I I knew what I learned what I learned on the first one, which was we need. Um, I mean, no surprises here, but we need the best players. We need players that love this music and and um, and are going to bring um, what they want. You know, it needs to be a, a, a collaboration in the truest sense with 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 musicians that have their own style and their own sensitivity and their own sensibility. You know, those are the types of people I want to work with. It's not, you know, just work for hire, do as I say. Um So I, I knew that I wanted to continue that kind of um, collaborative relationship. Lauren, um, what, what was the mo of the uh, of the recordings of Globe Maker? Uh, was it uh, did you do the bass tracks first? Uh, was it all live? Uh, and how long did it? Uh, uh, how much time did you spend uh, recording the actual album? So it started with. Um, for the most part, you know, I, 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 I write the songs on a piano, um, record them on a voice memo or garage band, send them to my producer, which is um, Sean O'Brien, which is Sean O'Brien, who's brilliant. He's a guitar player and, and just an amazing um, producer and engineer and mixer. And so I'd send him the, um, a bunch of demos and then we would re-record the demos together with him either playing guitar or piano, we're getting the tempo just right. Maybe he's writing some additional chords if we feel like it's getting a little too repetitive. And then, okay, what do we, you know, who do we want? Um, what do we want on these songs? And we would do these incredible live sessions where I would be singing in the booth. We'd have, you know, bass, guitar, drums. Um, yeah, that was, it was usually um, just the, me plus three um so it was live oh no no uh, and, and keys and keys of course yeah um and we'd do it live we would do these live sessions and i'd sing take after take after take it was incredible you know and then um 
and then one and then and then Sean would do a, a mix, you know, um, and then we'd listen to it, you know, in the next couple days and then we'd say, all right, does it need anything else? Do we need to do any overdubs? And then maybe and that's when we would, you know, bring in um, sax or, or, you know, horns or strings or whatever additional in, additional instruments. Um, but yeah, but basically everything, um, the players were always um, recording for the most part to a live vocal. That was really important to Sean. Also, what a big player in uh, the uh, successful uh, making of the album was secretly Canadian. That yes, you um, you know you started working with you you were newly signed to them, and uh, how was working with them? What was what was their input on the album if they had any? Yeah. Um, I mean, I love secretly. I mean, the relationship there has been really, just really blessed, you know, uh, uh, so much so that I'm, you know, a bit, uh, you know, it's difficult to, to accept a good thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had been, um, when they heard the album, uh, birthday Thursday and, and gay angels had not been, um, written or recorded yet. But, you know, I mean, they were so supportive and I mean, and it, it, it all just sort of happened miraculously. I um, was um, about to, you know, they heard the album, let's just say on a Friday and that following Tuesday, I was playing a show. So they were able to come and see me perform live. And then I had the tour lined up with Father John Misty. So I looked like I really had my shit together. And um, so it all, you know, it was it was just really perfect timing. And, um, you know, their input on the album was like, what the hell? You know, where, you know, where, how did we not know about this? And I mean, it was just, you know, in, in so incredibly flattering um, and, and just hard to believe, you know, that I mean, this label with so many artists that I worship and admire that. Yeah. So. Um, it's a label that puts you on the on the radar. Correct. Yeah, and because obviously just, all the attention around you kind of skyrocketed after you signed for them, and uh, even we in in Italy came to know about you. So you know, it's I think it's uh, due to them, and obviously uh, their mission is to uh, just let us hear some great music because they're great at what they're producing. They're great at what they invest in their time on. And uh, you mentioned uh, Gay Angels, which is, uh, I think it's probably the, I'm not sure if it's the highlight of the album, but it's just a song that blew me away. Um, and uh, I thought that um, uh, that Glove Maker couldn't be topped. But that song actually did better in my uh, in my opinion. Can you tell me about the creation of that song? I wouldn't call it the making of the writing, but just the creation of that song. Well, thank you. Really, I mean, um, that you know, uh, going back to performance informing the the, the music, you know. After playing, uh, doing the, um, the, the the small tour last year, I had not yet written Gay Angels. And I felt when I was performing, I was like, there is a piece missing. There is a piece missing. And um, I didn't exactly know what that piece was. But then I started writing Gay Angels. And I thought, you know, as far as like thinking of the album as a, as a, as a portrait, I thought, you know, there needs to be some information about my family, about me being gay in the context of that um, family um, dynamic. That is just information that needs to be um, addressed. Um, so that was, that's all I knew. You know, there needs to be, um, I want to share information about my family and 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 my sexuality. Um And, and that's all I knew, you know, and, and, and then, um, and then, and then that song came to be and, um, 
and I sent it to Sean and and he was really um what was his first, by yeah what was his first reaction oh I wish I could I, I keep notes you know I keep all the <laughs> notes from this so I'd have to go into the notes and see what his reaction is uh, reaction was but he was um, noted then yeah <laughs> I hope so <laughs> uh but you know I mean he yeah he he um you know because there were a few songs there were additional songs that we recorded that did not make it on the album but this was one that he felt strongly about as well and um and we actually you know the week that I was filming the music video for Hollywood Boulevard, we were also doing string arrangements with Drew Erickson um, and then recording strings uh, with him at Sunset Sound that week, you know, so the week of, of, of the music video. It, it, it was the last song we recorded, you know, on the album. So um, again, I, I mean, I think that gave me... Uh, I think it's the best vocal on the album, if I can say so. The um, crescendo, the the whole, you know, riser in that song. I mean, it 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 just shines because you think it reaches. Uh, you, you may think it it it's reached a certain level, and it's not going to go any further than that, any higher than that, and then it does. And, yeah. and and that it's incredible because it's like where the hell does he find the room for additional emotions in a track like that which is astonishing i i uh, trudy found it uh, a, a high moment of artistry from you thank you and the the production i just it's it's so beautiful it's so beautiful I it's just... lush it's lush it's lush and it's and it's sensitive and and you know i mean something i'm always um concerned about because you know so many people always you know one of the words that people use to describe the music is cinematic cinematic dramatic but i think there's a very fine line between being dramatic and melodramatic and i never want to be melodramatic you know i don't want it to be absurd um so Sean really, really knows um, how to um, keep it to in. Stay, keep it in. Keep it in because it's not a Broadway show. Although you know, God bless Broadway shows. Um, but yeah, it's not. You know, I don't want it to be um, overindulgent. You're you know so indulgent that it loses its emotional path. L Lauren, what is a glove maker? Uh, can you explain <laughs> it to us Italians? I mean, it has it got to do with fame? Because I read some somewhere that it has to do with fame. And do you have an obsession with fame or are you just taking the piss? <laughs> well, it's not just the Italians that don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with a glove maker. My fam nobody what the hell is a glove maker? Um <laughs> glove make you know when i wrote that song i had you know i did not i had no conception of of of, of talking of you know of what a glove maker was of talking about a glove maker the line just came out of um of the writing and and um and i immediately thought oh there's really something that feels um potent about this visual um and as I came to, you know, un un unpack what, you know, what, what, what was this? Um, it felt like a really accurate um, um, umbrella statement for, for this body of work, which has to do with craft and crafting and obsession and the hand as a symbol for a signature, you know, as a, as a kind of um, uh, um the hand almost as like an autograph as a um as a fingerprint as a fingerprint yeah and and i the idea of um of uh, the the sensuality and the um the, the 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 attention to detail and the attention to um um uh form um all of these ideas just you know um seemed sort of baked into um this idea of a glove maker. And then, um, yeah, so it was, you know, it was, um, it wasn't like I, you know, had done research about, you know, it, it's less about a literal 
you know, practice yes, of making it's gloves, a metaphor. of course. Yeah, it's a metaphor. Um, and um, and then my my friend Kala Henkel, who uh, is an artist and, and and a writer, and she wrote um, the 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 album bio, and I thought it was really really. Um, I just thought she did it a, 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 such a beautiful job. Um, yeah, talking about um, you know crafting these different um, uh, almost masks or identities um, that we all wear to 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 share the information about our ourselves that you know in a way that feels suitable for the moment. <laughs> the first, let's say, handshake that we had with you was with Hollywood Boulevard. Um, I wasn't familiar with your previous production. Then I got to listen to it, Obvious, of course. Found it very interesting. Very good, high quality. It's, uh, it's, it's still high quality. And, uh, uh, but Hollywood Boulevard kind of sets us in a different mood, in a different place. And uh, it's the, the backstory and... Um, And it's the uh, will, the desire, the craving for that star, for that recognition, uh, for that fame. And uh, in a, in, on, a, in a, on, on a way, you think it's a shallow thing, it's a shallow way of living. Uh, at the same time, you feel desperation, so there's empathy. Uh, where do you stand? Are you, is, is this something that you want? Is recognition something important to you? Or... Uh, Uh, is it just is it just LA that works that way, and it's your, it's a critique on the society and the place where you live? I think it's a lot of those things. You know, I I think that uh, I mean, you asked before. You know, am I just taking the piss with the you know obsession with with fame? I mean, um, yes and no. You know, yes and no. I. I uh, I want to make great work um, that I'm proud of, that I um, that excites me, you know, that that surprises me and challenges me. You know, that's what I want, and I want, and, and that's what I do. You know, that's what I hope to continue to do, and um, and I want to share that. I want. Um, acknowledgement, you know, um, with that, you know, I, I said this to, you know, I, I, when talking about Hollywood Boulevard, you know, I said, you know, that song has nothing to do with fame or Hollywood or, or celebrity, you know, I mean, on the one hand, you know, in some ways it does, in, in another way, I think it has nothing to do with that. It's just about wanting to feel that what I do or that what you do is valuable and matters, you Relevant. know, and, and, and has some kind of impact, you know, for yourself, for your, for your peers, you know, that, you know, am I, do I have worth? Do I have worth as a person, you know? Um, and then the sort of wink and the bullshit and the playfulness is let's just, you know, it's this Hollywood story, which, you know, I'll almost feels secondary. I mean, I love, you know, I'm from LA. I love all of those um, sort of cultural cliches, you know, I, and I love, the, you know, the walk of, you know, uh, of course I would love a, a, a star on the, on the walk. You would, of fame. You would love we, to make an impact. Of course. Yeah. And, um, You know, I mean, I love the history of Los Angeles and the entertainment yeah. industry, and I find it really um, fascinating. And 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 I'm really inspired by um, you know people like Charlie Chaplin and and Jim Henson and um, uh, Buster Keaton, uh, this man Sid Grauman who opened up the the Chinese theater, and it was his idea to have to, that a premiere should have the spotlights and the red carpet and the hands. I, I think that I mean the hands and the um, the handprints and the in the ground. I mean, I find to be so beautiful, and and I go there and I put my hands and and want to touch, you know, Paul Newman's hand. I mean, I find those things to be really 
um, Symbol powerful. Symbolic. It, it, it's kind of weird because when you, uh, in order to leave your prints, yeah. you have to kneel down, yes, which is yes. very, it's a very humbling move for a celebrity, for a movie star. He has to, you know, just put this, put his knees on the curb. And, yeah. uh, you know, which is something that you don't expect celebrities to do. So it's like that also works as a backstory to fame, probably. Sure. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a funny, you know, it's a funny combination of, um, I know, you know, yeah, I mean, there is a, it's ridiculous and shallow and and not and not you know i don't think there's um i got i got to put it this way yeah do you believe in a high level of artistry and no success uh would that stand or you think that recognition of uh our own artistry is crucial too is is just as important as the art itself no it's not as important as the art itself no 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 definitely less not is, as important less is important is less important i would hope you know i think that we any any anybody but any artist certainly hopes that they can uh, that they'll be recognized um, that there will be a community around their work, that they can support themselves on their work, even though Steve Albini says otherwise. <laughs> yeah, keep your day job. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but there's no, there's no, um, there's no doubt that there are triumphant artists who who do not get their um recognition um but the work exists and that's a miracle and thank god for it i gotta take you back to uh the cooper uh the cooper union uh school of art that you attended in new york while you were living there which yeah. i believe that was a crucial that it was crucial in your path to a formative path to being an artist. Uh, and it's a double question, uh, which is not something you would normally have to go for. They say it's wrong to make two questions. But, Bring it on. But I'll do it anyway. <laughs> would, your teacher, would your teacher be proud of you today? Would your teachers be proud of you today? And uh, what, what was the biggest lesson they taught you there? Mm. about being an uh, artist um wow i love those questions um i can't speak for all of those professors but um let's pick you know, your, fav of, your favorite one like the one that was yeah, your think, reference i think that they would you know i mean some of them follow me on instagram and are you know message me and and and, and congratulate me um I don't think that any of them would be surprised. Okay. Any of them would be surprised by this. I think they'd say, yep, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and I think they would be really happy to see, because, because I was writing performances, I was, you know, at Cooper Union, and I was painting and, and making sculptures. And I think they would see, I would hope that they'd see what I'm doing now and say, wow, you know, he's managed to really integrate these different um, real interests that he had into one, uh, sort of one practice. Um, and what did I... What I, you know, the, the, I'd say the, the, the big lesson um, that I learned, you know, the, the emphasis or the... Um, I think the, the the mission statement of my time uh, at that art school was, you know, you you have to care. You have to care about what you're doing. Um, doesn't matter what it is, what form it takes, but um, 
caring means being serious about it, right? It means that too. Being Correct. It means, it means you decide. It means you decide. No one is going to tell you what you should be interested in, what you should do with your life, what you should do with your time. You tell us. You tell us. You know, what matters to you? You know, what is worth your time? Um, yeah, you know, and that was, I mean, that was a, a, a the most beautiful reality to, 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 to participate in. All of these young, crazy assholes, <laughs> you know, these students <laughs> that were just, that really believed and really wanted to do great and really wanted to, you know, I mean, what? It was so beautiful. It was really so beautiful. About the slurring in your album, it's something you don't expect. Like two singles <laughs> out of two, like the first two singles, they both include uh, slur words. And yeah, I was very surprised, but then I tried to read between the lines. And when you said, uh, motherfucker is the name. Mm-hmm. I kind of figure out like motherfucker was like a pretty impersonal way. Like you, you want to be famous, but you're just a motherfucker. You're, you're just a nobody. You just an anybody more than nobody. Was mm. I correct? Yeah. Oh, I love that. You know, I, it's funny. I, I, I was deciding, um, do I, at that point in the song, do I say Lauren Kramer is the n name, but no, 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 I want, also, no, you, it had... you state your name at, at the beginning of the song. Exactly. How many times can we say the name once is more than enough, but I want there, I wanted there to, that word captures that, that the anger, the frustration, the, this is, this is, this is the whole thing is ridiculous and I know it. You know, I, I, I guess I love the idea of the listener hearing that and yelling that out. You know, there had to be a name, something, a name there that anyone could yell, you know. Um, and it just, yeah, it has, there's this fight, there is fight. And it's a mouthful. Yeah, I, I think it, I love, I, you know, I love those, um, I mean, there's that Pixies song. I am the son of a motherfucker. You know, I think of the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have to say that. <laughs> well, you did twice. <laughs> Lauren, when, uh, when did you find your voice? I mean, it. your voice is not just a voice. It's not... Uh, an everyday's voice is not an every artist's voice. Your voice is a, it sounds like a generational one. It sounds like a, a very a truly special one. When did you start working on it? Like, because there's, there, had, there must have been a time, a switch from singing to singing. When was that? Um, well, thank you. Again, I mean, um, I mean, I started singing, I mean, I sang as a little kid and then went to, I, I uh, you know, I did um, chorus, uh, gospel choir, um, and then I took vocal lessons as a teenager. And then, um, but then when I started, um, but then, when I started recording the first album, I remember there was one song that I wrote and then I was having, I was struggling um, to hit the, some of the notes. And so I found a really, really, really good um, vocal coach in LA. Um, but it's, it's, it's ongoing and it's, it's been ongoing, you know, I mean, I, um, I think, I think, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah, you, but it's, please. it's different to sing something that is not yours. And, uh, to sing something that you have written because it's never been sang before. So you have to give it the personality. You have to, uh, you know, uh, dress it up, send it to school and, you know, just make it grow up and yeah. turn it into an adult. And it's, it's easy to sing covers, 
it's a whole different story when you have to sing your song. So it's you need to find your way of singing. So I, I wonder how you discovered yours. Yeah. I have I have no idea. I have no idea. Um I mean again I was writing songs when I was uh 12, 13, 14, whatever. Um and just figuring it out as I went, you know. Um but uh you know, I mean there was a period of time in New York where I really thought that I was singing with my true voice and it was much more of this kind of, I, I call it, you know, this vaudevillian squawk where, wah, 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 you know, almost like a duck or something. I don't know. And I don't even know where that came from. Um, but, uh, but that's yeah, what, that's I mean, what actors do, for instance, they take yeah. from animals. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. You know, and, and I, you know, I just, I'm tr constantly trying to um, to meet the meet the song, you know, give the song honor the. I mean, it's so I don't know over dramatic or pretentious, but I just I want to. Um, I just I really love to sing. I really love the action of singing, you know. Um, so I'm just trying, you know. Just trying things out, <laughs> and it transpires. I mean, it's pretty. It, it's pretty uh, evident in in this album. May I ask you if you must listen to it right? Sometimes you you do listen to it, right? Oh, I occasionally. Mean... <laughs> Not so much these days. I I've heard enough, but yes. Okay. <laughs> Does it move you? Oh, um. Yeah. What moves me is that it's is that it exists, that we did it, that I did it. That moves me, you know. Um but then you and, fall into the music while you listen to it. You know, last week I performed at Amoeba Records. Which yeah, is I read this, that, yeah, on the first of May. Oh it was which was so so special to me. I used to go to that store when I was a teenager and you know, it's this institution in LA and um, and the performance was really, really fun and a lot of people came out. And But then afterwards, when I was signing the records, which was also just a dream come true, the mute, the album was playing um, in the store over the speakers and it sounded incredible. It was the best that I'd ever heard it. And Sean was there and he <laughs> felt the same way. It just, it felt, it felt so real. And then we went to a bar afterwards and they were playing the album on the jukebox. Um, I believe, you know, I, I hear the music and I, and, and I believe what I'm saying. I believe how it sounds, you know, um, which is just, I, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for that. Um, I have a last final question because I don't want to kidnap you, Lauren. Thank you very Please. much for uh, just for your time. But um, of course, initially your career seemed like a team effort uh, because of all the collaborators. Now it feels like it's you. Mm. Uh, is it a relief or is it something you miss or you still think that collaborating? Well, obviously there are collaborations. John Kirby is one of those. Uh, and Francis is, is, you know, it's obviously one of your friends. But uh, how do you, how do you see it going? Like more collaborations? It's it's is it something you need to do? They like she's sharing part of your being an artist too. Yeah, I mean, without being you know a politician about this, it's. It's a, you know, it really is, um, it's a privilege to work with these um, amazing musicians. It just is. I mean, it's a privilege to know them. It's a pri privilege to have their respect. It's a privilege to have their time and their willingness to, 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 to collaborate. So it's always a collaboration. It's always a collaboration um, that I really love, you know, and um, and I feel really confident um does it shelter in, you i don't think it shelters me i think that it um
I don't think that it shelters me. I think that it, um, it it lifts me up. It lifts me up, and um, and it's, I'm grateful for. It's, it's like for the it, difference. You know? It's the difference uh, between leaving alone on your own and living and sharing it with someone else or having friends around, you know, probably it just makes life better. I just, you know, and I do live alone and I love living alone. And I, you know, I feel, um, I feel very, um, I don't even know the word. I don't know the word, but I don't, you know, I feel, I feel like myself, you know, I feel like myself and I, I don't feel um, like I'm hiding behind anyone. I don't feel like they're hiding behind me. It just, uh, it's a choice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is the painting behind you uh, a painting of yours? Yes. You made it. Yes. What does it represent? Oh, we don't know. Oh, it's, we don't. I mean, it's an abstract piece of art, of art, so it's not really easy from here. But does he have a special meaning for you? Mm, the special meaning is that you know, when I moved back from uh, New York, I was living at home uh, with my mom, and I was making um, uh, some paintings at that time in in, in her backyard. And um, I mean, and I love the painting, and and um, it's nice to have it. Uh, here in my house now that i you know i don't live with her anymore I, i it's um what is it flowers and uh, uh stars stars <laughs> okay stars in the middle yeah there you go lauren thank you very much i uh cannot stress uh harder like how important this album is i think it's one of the best of this year and uh, It deserves attention. You deserve attention. And uh, I'll be uh, happy to help you with that because you deserve it. And uh, uh, it's all going towards that star on the Walk of Fame. Thank you so much, Enrico. Really, it's uh, it's it's such a uh, an honor to um, just have your support. And I really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. And uh, follow me back on X. Or I won't have a chance oh. to talk to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. I need to get on there. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Enrico. Goodbye, good everyone. Good luck for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.